Yeah, and I remember you coming up as a grad student and you're looking at all of this and uh, you have the kind of mind that was curious about this, just raised more and more questions and finally came to the uh, question, can I make a scientific hypothesis about this to answer all of these questions that are raised that nobody can answer about how in the world do we get the Cambrian explosion? How do we get these animals? How do we get the different forms? How do we get this circuitry? Where did all this information come from? Well, the, the key thing I was thinking about is whether or not it's possible to develop a rigorous scientific argument for intelligent design. Key phrase, scientific and, argument. Right, and also maybe all these problems with Darwinian evolution and other forms of biological evolutionary theory as well as chemical evolution, maybe there's, they're the flip side of a positive case for intelligent design. And so I got to th thinking about that and discovered that Darwin used a method of reasoning for investigating the remote past. It was called inference to the best explanation. And he got this largely from Charles Lyell, the great geologist, who was also investigating events in the remote past. And Lyell had a maxim. He said that when you're trying to explain an event in the remote past, we should be looking for causes that are now in operation. Causes that we know from our present experience produce the effect in question. And so I got to thinking about that, and I asked myself, well, what is the cause that produces circuitry? What's the cause that produces digital code? What's the cause that produces a complex information storage, transmission, and processing system? All of which are features of either living cells or animal life today. And in each case, the answer was, well, from our present experience, we know of only one type of cause that produces those effects, and that cause is an intelligent agent or a mind. And about the time I was thinking about this, I came across a passage in the work of a man named Henry Quassler. He was a, an information theorist or scientist who was a pioneer in applying informational concepts to understanding living systems. And he made an offhand comment on page 16 of one of his little books. I remember it vividly. He said, the creation of new information is habitually associated with conscious activity. And I thought, is that right? And I began to think about that in light of all the failures of evolutionary th theories to explain the origin of information and the origin of information processing systems. And I thought that absolutely is right. In our experience, whenever we see information, whether it's in a hieroglyphic inscription or a paragraph in a book or embedded in a radio signal or in a section of computer code, and we trace that information back to its ultimate source, we always come to a mind, not a material process. So Quassler's little quotation, his maxim, information is habitually associated with conscious activity, is true to our experience. And our uniform and repeated experience, which underscores that principle, is also the, the basis of all scientific reasoning. In fact, that was Lyell's dictum. Right. That the present is the key to the past. Our present knowledge of cause and effect should guide our inferences about what happened in and the past. And he was a mentor to Darwin, and Darwin picked it up and put it in his book, too. Exactly, exactly. And so what we have developed in making the case for intelligent design biology is a positive case for intelligent design is the best explanation of these key features of life, the information-bearing properties of DNA, the information processing systems that are at work, expressing that information, the circuitry that uses it. And we have developed a positive case based on those features and also based on Darwin's own method of scientific reasoning, arguing that intelligent design actually provides the best, most causally adequate explanation of the key features that we see in life. Yeah, intelligent design basically says we're talking about God. Well, initially it just infers to an intelligent agent, but as you know in my most recent book, I think when we talk about not only the evidence from biology, but also the evidence from physics and cosmology, the type of designing agent that is necessary to explain those three classes of information is the type of agent that has the attributes that, for example, traditional Jews and Christians have long associated with one and only one person, and that is yeah. the deity, with God.